News back home, and the big news in Canberra is the Treasurer meeting with his state counterparts to talk about how to stimulate the economy. For more on this, we're joined by Finance Minister Matthias Cormann, all the way from Perth, Western Australia, where it's very early. So we thank you for your time this morning. It's good to be here. Now, with this meeting with the Treasurers, uh, we are expecting a call from the states to get more federal funding through to help them put more infrastructure projects on to help stimulate the economy. Do you think that the federal government could be bringing forward this funding? Well, you know, we've put forward a record $100 billion federal infrastructure investment pipeline, and the Prime Minister has written to all of the state premiers to ask them to identify projects that they could deliver more quickly. And we stand ready, willing and able, and a number of state governments have taken up the offer to work with us. I mean, the funding is available. The question is, you know, with what speed individual state and territory governments uh, might be able to get uh, the projects actually rolled out. And, uh, you know, that is a matter over which we do not have direct influence. But uh, certainly the Prime Minister has reached out to uh, state and territory premiers uh, to see where uh, we can uh, accelerate uh, the uh, you know, implementation of uh, the projects that we are funding all around Australia. How much of that funding is going to come through to the Australian economy in the next year? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, the Australian uh, economy continues to grow. We've uh, legislated $300 billion worth of, um, of um, uh, personal income tax relief. When it comes to infrastructure uh, investment, about half of the $100 billion infrastructure uh, investment pipeline uh, is uh, over the forward estimates. I mean, so there's a substantial level of uh, infrastructure investment. But, I mean, we want to get this right for the future. I mean, when uh, Kevin Rudd and Julia Gillard and Wayne Swan sought to stimulate uh, the economy uh, through infrastructure investment, so-called. Uh, they wasted billions of dollars on school halls that we didn't need and pink bats uh, that uh, had to be taken out of people's roofs. Uh, so, I mean, you know, we, we want to ensure that our investment into infrastructure is into high-quality, productivity-enhancing, economy-growing infrastructure. And we are working to a plan. We are prepared to bring things forward where that makes sense, where the projects are ready. Uh, but, uh, you know, still, uh, we, we are committed to ensure that the funding goes into high-quality uh, projects and is appropriately prioritised. There are some alarming figures that show that there is a slowdown in the economy. National accounts revealed the three-year average annual growth figure was 0.4 per cent. It's worse since it's been since the 1990s recession. Australia's economy grew by 1.4 per cent in the year to June. That's the lowest annual rate since 2009. Should we be concerned? These sound like weak figures. Well, you know, we've gone through 28 years of uh, continuous growth so far uh, and continuing to grow. We are one of only 10 economies in the world with a triple I uh, credit rating by all three uh, credit, major credit uh, ratings uh, agencies. Uh, more than 1.4 million new jobs over the last uh, six years. Record workforce uh, participation. The lowest uh, welfare dependency uh, in 30 years. Uh, but yes, of course, I mean, we are facing a whole series of global economic headwinds. We're dealing with uh, the implications of uh, the floods early in the year and a serious drought uh, across large parts of Australia. So, of course, we have some challenges. But uh, unlike other economies around the world, which contracted uh, in the June quarter, our economy continued to grow in the June quarter, even though that was also the quarter in which, of course, uh, we, we had a, a federal election, which uh, traditionally uh, is a period in the lead-up of which there is a slowdown in uh, economic activity and investment activity. So, I mean, our, I mean we will obviously be, um, be very interested to see the third quarter national accounts data for, for the September quarter, which comes out in early December, and that will uh, inform our, our final decisions in relation to the mid-year economic and fiscal outlook. Uh, so we, we continue to monitor, uh, of course, uh, economic developments, and we'll continue to make judgments as appropriate. But... Uh, you know, it's, it's very important that we uh, continue to calmly work uh, to our plan. Uh, we, we knew in April when we delivered the budget that we're facing a series of uh, headwinds and that we needed to take action uh, in that context. And indeed we have and we will continue to do so. Our interest rate set by the Reserve Bank is 0.75%. That is a record low and there's not many moves left before we're hitting zero. This is bad news for people who have deposits in banks, in particular <coughs> pensioners, which is, uh, sorry, retirees, not pensioners. That's a big concern for them. Why is this not a time when we should be discussing quantitative easing? 
Well, for firstly, I mean, monetary policy is entirely a matter for the um, Reserve Bank. I mean, the Reserve Bank makes these judgments independently, and that's appropriate. It's important that these are not political decisions, but uh, decisions taken independently based on an independent analysis of the economic data. Now, in relation to uh, interest rate settings in Australia, like as the governor of the Reserve Bank uh, has said, I mean, we live in an interconnected world, and uh, we obviously uh, can't ignore uh, the uh, structural uh, uh, changes in interest rate settings around the world, because ultimately, if we kept uh, an interest rate in Australia that was, you know, materially higher than in other parts of the world, that would have an impact on the value of our currency uh, at a time that is already quite challenging for us. I mean, if we had uh, the uh, value of the Australian currency go up uh, right now because we had uh, comparatively higher interest rates, that would impact on the competitiveness of large uh, sections of our uh, trading economy and that that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a good thing so when it comes to quantitative easing all i can do is uh, you know point to comments by the uh, governor of the reserve bank you know when he last appeared uh, before the house of representatives economics committee uh, when uh, when he said words to the effect that he couldn't uh, see a scenario where uh, you know unconventional monetary policy options uh, you know would be uh, required for australia but ultimately i mean these are matters uh, that the Governor of the Reserve Bank and the Board of the Reserve Bank have to continue to assess independently, um, you know, as they must. But since then, there have been a number of rate cuts and speeches given by the Reserve Bank Governor, and he said fiscal stimulus from the government would be welcome. Why not dip into that surplus to stimulate the economy now? Uh, well, you know, firstly, uh, there is fiscal stimulus. I mean, there is fiscal stimulus uh, on the back of $300 billion worth of um, the personal income tax relief, $20 billion of which uh, has gone into the economy over the last uh, two and a half or so months. Um, so, I mean, there is substantial uh, fiscal stimulus. The second point I would make is that the government doesn't have any money of its own. <clears throat> All of the money that the government uh, can use to spend is money that the government first has to take uh, out of the pockets of hardworking Australians or out of the pockets of businesses around Australia, which, uh, you know, obviously would... Uh, have a negative rather than a positive impact on our economic growth opportunities into the future. The government does not have any money of its own. The government only has the money uh, yeah. available to spend that it takes out of the economy. Uh, so, you know, and w whether that is uh, taking it out of the economy now or whether it is forcing taxes up higher uh, in, over the future because of uh, higher levels of uh, deficits and debt, uh, it would have a negative impact on our Australian economy over time. And that is not something that we want to do. We want to put the Australian economy on the strongest possible uh, foundation, uh, economic uh, and fiscal foundation, not just for now, but over the uh, medium and long term. And, and that is why we've got to ensure, among other things, that government lives within its means, uh, that we can pay our way in terms of our recurrent expenditure, uh, rather than uh, to uh, spend money that we haven't got. So why is the government de ignoring the suggestion from the ANZ CEO, Shane Elliott, that there should be a summit to discuss quantitative easing if the banks are concerned about it and they want to talk to the Reserve Bank? Why would the government not want to get on board? Well, it, it's not the government's decision uh, to determine what should happen in relation to monetary policy. I mean, unconventional monetary policy and conventional monetary policy options are entirely a matter uh, for the Reserve Bank. It's not a matter uh, of applying political pressure uh, to, reserve, to the Reserve Bank. The Reserve Bank needs to make its own judgments. Um, and, um, you know, I, I note that the Reserve Bank governor is on the record as saying that he can't foresee a scenario uh, where um, unconventional monetary policy options would be required uh, for Australia. Now, you know, that is, that is a matter uh, for the Reserve Bank ultimately to judge. Uh, it's, it's not something uh, that the political... Uh, level of government uh, should be uh, interfering with. It's not a matter of interfering, though, is it, if he's suggesting that more fiscal stimulus coming through, because we have seen those tax cuts hit a lot of figures that would indicate the health of the economy, including consumer confidence, including consumption data, and those tax cuts haven't had the impact that was expected. If the Reserve Bank's saying, why not increase fiscal stimulus, why not at least go to the table with the banks? Just discuss well, it. I, I, think it is I, I think it is entirely premature to make the assessment that you've just made about the impact of personal income tax cuts. I mean, there was a level of hyperventilating and, uh, uh, you know, quite frankly, uh, entirely premature commentary 
uh, coming from some quarters uh, on the back of very early data when the uh, effect of the personal income tax cuts wasn't even two weeks old. Uh, I, you know, we, we are working to a plan. We believe it's very important that we continue to calmly and steadily work uh, to our plan. We've made the, what we believe are the appropriate judgments. Uh, there is uh, third quarter national accounts data uh, coming out, uh, you know, in early December. Uh, you know, we, we believe that the uh, data will show uh, that economic growth uh, has strengthened compared to the uh, previous quarter. Uh, but again, the Australian economy continues to grow. We are into our 28th year of continuous growth. Uh, in the last financial year, uh, employment growth was running at 2.6% uh, against a forecast of 1.5%. That is a 1.1% higher employment growth uh, than was anticipated when the budget was delivered. Welfare dependency at the lowest level in 30 years. Workforce participation at the highest level on record. Uh, so, I mean, yes, um, of course, everybody knows that there are a whole range of challenges because of what's happening in the global economy and because of some of the things that are happening in our domestic economy, such as the drought and earlier in the year, uh, the massive floods uh, in North Queensland. But we are working our way through it. Uh, and the last thing uh, that um, Australians need uh, is uh, for, for the government to get distracted by, uh, you know, quite frankly, um, you know, premature and, um, you know, uninformed commentary. Just finally, do you foresee any scenario where the Reserve Bank will have to use quantitative easing? Well, again, that is not our judgment. That is a judgment for the Reserve Bank to make. And, and as I've said you know, earlier, uh, you know, I would note that the Reserve Bank governor, who has got the responsibility uh, with the Reserve Bank board to work through this, has said that he doesn't see a scenario in which uh, unconventional monetary policy options would be required for Australia. But ultimately, it's a matter for the Reserve Bank to continue to monitor, uh, obviously, all of the economic data and information, to monitor what's happening uh, to monetary policy settings all around the world and, you know, obviously make judgments as appropriate, recognising that we live in an interconnected world and that what happens in uh, other parts of the world does have an impact on us. And so far, I mean, that's obviously what the Reserve Bank has been doing. And we would expect and we're very confident that that's what they will continue to do uh, into the future. Finance Minister Matthias Cormann, thank you for your time. Always good to talk to you.